kind of a new budding star here in our political stable is uh, Devin Carney from the 23rd District. He's really doing, I think, a very good job as a rep uh, for the shore area. And we're talking, they're both Republicans, by the way. I don't know that I needed to mention that, but uh, in, in any event, and, and both were elected in heavily uh, skewed Democratic areas. Uh, Paul Formica was the additional vote in the Senate that uh, basically made a, a, a supermajority impossible, or some, some such stuff in terms of the gyrations. Uh, ja uh, uh, Paul, how, how are you acclimating? You both are, are new to your assignments uh, this term. How is it going? Listen, I think it's going great. Um, I, I'm in awe of being able to go work in the Capitol amongst that history and tradition each and every day. Uh, I'm learning the process on on some of the uh, committees. Uh, certainly I'm on appropriations. That's a budget committee. I have a lot of experience with that. Uh, but the Energy and Technology Committee is a, is a tough learn. I'm spending a lot of time uh, in the, in the off-season. So are, are you uh, with, is that Paul... Uh Doyle's committee? Paul Doyle and Lonnie Reed, uh, you know, is a good group of folks. Tim Ackert uh, is there from uh, the House, is the House ranking member. Uh, and, you know, we deal with a lot of generation and transmission issues and trying to keep energy prices uh, down for the consumers. And, and this is a committee that worked in a bipartisan fashion. And uh, we had very good legislation come out of that committee this year. When people work together across party lines for the good of the customer, the resident, the taxpayer, the state of Connecticut, and, and we need to do more of that. So short of that, I, I think it's great. What I am surprised then, and you know, Devin can weigh in, is the amount of events and meetings and things that are going on that, uh, that I attend, you know, in the months of July and August. I really thought that would be... Uh, a, a little bit of a downtime, uh, but I'm attending events all over the district and, and all over the state, uh, you know, because it's important, uh, it's many important issues the senators need to get involved in and the reps. Devin? Yeah, uh, no, I, I am having a, a, a great time doing this. Uh, probably, though, you know, are you impressed with yourself? I don't, know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't mean that. I, I mean, you, you basically have done something... Um, that many people felt uh, was not not an easy task. Yeah. You, you've gotten into uh, a playing field that you know there, there are only what 140 people in the House of Representatives for Connecticut. 151. Yeah, like that. And so, and that's out of a population of three and a half million. When you start looking at that, you're that's a unique number. It's same yeah. thing. Paul, I mean, Paul's got he's very heady because uh, you know he's 37 out of 36 or 30, whatever it is. There aren't too many of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and so you sit there and you, you, you have a sense of power. You can't help but have that. But how do you how do you maintain how are you gonna maintain your humility? How are you gonna maintain your uh, uh, quintessential kind of feeling with people? Uh, the key is is stay out of Hartford as much as you can. Uh, you know, I know that I, I see it myself, there are some representatives uh, who are just there too much and it's a bubble there you know you're surrounded by lobbyists um, your special interests and you need to get out of that building and go talk to, to real people people that aren't being paid to lobby you to vote a certain way and, and that's what I see up there and I really try to, to get out in my district talk to folks as much as possible uh, about how they feel I really care about what my constituents think. I, I frequently write emails asking them to, uh, on controversial topics, asking them their opinions, and I, I really strongly take all of those opinions, whether I personally agree with them or not, into strong consideration. Uh, but but to me, the, the best thing about this position is the fact that you can do good with it. Uh, one of my... Uh, one instance that happened recently that actually that made me feel great was I'll just be real quick. A, a kid, uh, a, uh, this mother emailed me about uh, a driver's license, and her son needed to get his license uh, before he went off to college. I think out of state somewhere, and they they had scheduled an appointment for I think October because of all the back backlog. 
and I was able to, to bump it up to before the kid went to college and, and it, he got it and he passed and it was and it was just great being able to help somebody out like that and, and the kid was just so thankful that he was able to do that so things like that really Paul you got one of those stories great. well we have you know we have a lot of those stories you know I have a great aide Kim who helps assist the uh, in constituent services and we're all the time working and what I've started to do and, and not a specific story but what I've started to do instead of answering emails I'm trying to meet people in the district so that I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them uh, about you know what their problem is, how we can help navigate uh, the government, uh, you know, uh, red tape, and kind of move that through. And, and that's a big, big part of what we do. And I also think the philosophy difference is, you know, when you look at a triangle, you know, a lot of these folks are thinking they're at the top of the triangle looking down. Mayor's first selectment and the philosophy approach I'm taking is that I'm at the bottom part of the triangle trying to support and give support you know, to everybody moving up. And, and I think that's that's kind of the difference when you talk about humility and service. And, uh, you know, Devin and I have been in customer service all our lives. And that's that's the philosophy you have to take there. So, you know, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to share this with you. But uh, I, I called uh, Senator uh, Formica to be on the show and uh, got his office. And, and then uh, within a day or two of that, uh, I, I made what we call a butt call, and, and it was to the senator, and or he, he butt called me or something or other, and no, it was me to him, and I said, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I, I made a butt call. I, I was going to call my wife, and I hit you. You two were in the same you know, proximity in the in the list of the phone, and and the recents, and I, I I thought I hit hers, and I hit yours, and you know what he said. That goes to show you that there are only two people that will talk to you, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? and that that's not constituent service. That that's humiliating a taxpayer, and it's really hurtful. But you know. Devin, did we did we co-sponsor that bill for taxes on radio show? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, gentlemen, we're very proud of both of you. 